All right, we're back. We're on page 10 of notes four of Calc C. We were talking about the harmonic series, and that's just the sum from one to infinity of one over n. We have the sense, based on some partial sum stuff that we did, that this thing is diverging. Um, and so what we did was we just looked at, for whatever reason, powers of two is the upper bound. So uh, from one to one, one to two, one to four, one to eight, et cetera. Um, it definitely looks like uh, this thing is growing without bounds, but it's not really enough because maybe it is converging to, I don't know, 735. Like there's no way to know. So uh, what we need is something better. And so what we're gonna do is try to investigate this uh, in a slightly different way. So uh, if we look at the partial sums that are written out a little differently and then grouped according to kind of those upper bounds that we used, um, there's something that kind of happens that's a little weird. And so here's what it is. Uh, this grouping that we have right here is definitely equal to one half, obviously. The next grouping though, uh, one third is bigger than one fourth, which means that one third plus one fourth is bigger than one fourth plus one fourth, which means that this is also greater than one half. Let's look at the next grouping, right? So here, uh, one fifth is bigger than one eighth, one sixth is bigger than one eighth, one seventh is bigger than one eighth, then one eighth is one eighth. So this sum here is bigger than four times one eighth. This is bigger than one half. So this, uh, if you keep working, so like what's happening here basically is uh, this is like, uh, what's the best way to say this? I'm grouping them in powers of two. So I took like two to the zero terms, two to the um, first terms, two to the, I'm pointing without highlighting, two to the zero terms, two to the first terms, two to the second terms. This will be two to the third term. So there's eight terms here. And this will be bigger than 1 16th uh, plus 1 16th, 1 16th, 1 16th, et cetera. So this is gonna be bigger than uh, 1 half also. It's bigger than eight times 1 16th. Um, and so that's gonna keep happening forever. What's interesting about that, or what's useful about that, is that we can definitely say that the partial sums of this thing, so we gotta be careful. So I'm gonna say that S sub K is going to be bigger than, I, I actually don't know what the partial sum is, but I do know that it is greater than or equal to. So greater, I'm basically answering B up above because I think it's easier to like see everything while I do it. So uh, when K is equal to zero, we just got one, right? So K is equal to zero, we get this. Uh, if k is equal to one, we're doing the sum from one to one, so we get uh, like both of those. And then when k is equal to two, we get the first four terms, so like this. When k is equal to three, we get, uh, I'm gonna run out of like convenient ways to do this. Uh, when k is equal to three, we get all of these. So in general, I think the sum is greater than or equal to uh, one plus one half to the k. So uh, k is equal to zero gives us one. K is equal to two, uh, one rather, we get uh, the sum from one to two, which is three halves, which works. Uh, when K is equal to two, we get uh, the sum from one to four, which is definitely bigger than uh, one plus uh, two times one half, and so on. So I think that this is working, uh, I think. So I'm gonna say that the limit as K approaches infinity, of S sub K is the limit as K approaches infinity of one plus, well, it's actually, it's greater than, so greater than or equal to, which I'm having a lot of trouble with, greater than or equal to one half to the K, which is infinity. So if something is greater than or equal to infinity, uh, then we can definitely say that the sum from one to infinity of one over N diverges because the limit of its partial sums is infinite. So the harmonic series diverges and it's one over n to the first. One over n to the first diverges. That's gonna be really important. Just kind of an illustration though, I guess, of like the n term test for divergence. If the limit is not zero, the, t the series diverges. If the limit is zero, you don't know anything. Um, which is important, and the harmonic series is the classic example of that, right? You want to like always have a bunch of examples that you can like rely on, like, oh, this one will tell me exactly what's happening. Harmonic series, great one to remember. 
sort of a dividing line between convergent and divergent series in certain ways. Um, so make sure you're aware of it. So these are the series tests that we have so far. We've got the n-term test for divergence, and that's it. Geometric series, uh, they converge if the absolute value of r is less than one. They converge to the first over one minus the ratio is how I think of it. They diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one. Um, and then telescoping series converge if they are telescoping, basically. I mean, can they converge if they fit the definition of convergent, uh, of telescoping, rather. And then uh, these are the ones that we should have memorized, so I'm going to write these out. So sine. Sine is odd, and so it's going to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the fifth over 5 factorial, uh, first four non-zero terms. So that's you're always asked for non-zero terms, kind of to avoid that like annoyance where somebody's like, well, I wrote a bunch of terms, but they're all zero. Nobody thinks you're clever when you do that. You do, I guess, but no one else does. Cosine's even, so we get the even powers. And then E, E is like, it just has all of them and it doesn't alternate. It's almost like you're adding these two together, but you're not, so. Uh, every every power with its factorial. So in some ways it's like the nicest one, I guess. Uh, you just get the nth term is just x to the n over n factorial. You got to put the plus dot 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 at the end or it's not infinite, then it's just a Taylor polynomial. Uh, and then you shouldn't be saying equals, you should be saying approximately equal to and blah, blah, blah. So this one is the weirdest one. This one's actually just the sum of x to the n, which I think is crazy. This is the only one that has a finite interval of convergence. This, the absolute value of x has to be less than one. Otherwise, and you could, maybe you recognize this one now as geometric. I mean, I feel like when you first encounter it, it, you're less likely to do that, but this is very clearly the sum of geometric. Sum of geometric. I, I don't know what I'm writing there. I'm trying to write. R-I-C or something, T-R-I-C. Um, okay, so these are the ones that we know so far. I'm gonna stop this video here, come back in the next one. I think the next page is just like a mixed bag of practice problems and that's probably good because once you start learning the test, you really need to practice them. Uh, so I will see you there and we're gonna kind of, well, hopefully blow through some problems, we'll see.